friends, welcome to day seven of Advent. On day seven, we will be doing my wrap up for the month of November. I read a total of 14 books and this month because I've been planning the advent I actually didn't pre-plan to do my uh, wrap up as I normally do reading lowest to highest so we're just going to go through in the order that I read them this month. A little bit of a different take but uh, gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So the first book that we're going to talk about is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendricks. This book follows a book club in the south. It is I believe the same town as the My Best Friend's Exorcism takes place in or at least very close to that same town. This follows the main character Patty as she becomes part of this book club in her local community where they are reading uh, like mystery novels and true crime things and one of the neighbor's really attractive nephews joins their book club and uh, there's some things off about him and then some kids go missing across town and it's basically about the Southern Book Club taking down a vampire. I gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. It was mostly because it was pretty boring. I think the very beginning of the book was really good and the very end of the book was really good but the middle part of the book was uh, questionable at best. I've read a lot of other reviewers reviews since having read this and I think a lot of people are really concerned about um, the gaslighting of these white middle class women and how the town basically doesn't care about the poor black community and I think what people don't realize is I think that that was done purposefully not in the sense that Grady Hendrix believes that white middle class women are dumb and that black people don't matter but that he wanted to point out that these are things that were going on in that time period which was the 90s uh, the 80s and 90s and people feel like those things didn't happen then but they did and then to some extent they still happen now uh, depending on where you live and the kind of relationships that you're in so I think those things were done purposefully I don't think it was something that was done um, to have any kind of like a negative connotation on uh, Grady and just his lack of empathy for non-straight white cisgendered males. I think it was done purposefully and so that part didn't really bother me. I just think that like for something that was sold to me as a vampire book it was very light on the vampire aspect of it until much later in the book and the middle part of the book was just I mean this book covers like a 10 year span and it's just is it just it, it was too much and I didn't love it and it, it was not my thing and I liked my best friend's exorcism but I didn't love that either and so I don't know if it's just my relationship with Grady Hendrix's writing I don't really know but I didn't love it and then I'm moving on. Next we're going to talk about five books in the Creepover series. I read this during a readathon that I did of spooky middle grade books so I will link that vlog in the description box below as well as in the cards if you want to know more of my full thoughts on these. Uh, I've been reading these for a couple of years. They are short mid-grade books that all have some form or another of a sleepover in them and they're creepy. My ratings for these were a 3, 3.25, 3.75, 3.75 and No Trick or Treating got a 4.5. That one was super spooky. Again, if you want to know more about that, check out the vlog that I did for that weekend. Also read that weekend was Christina's Ghost by Betty Ren Wright, and I gave that a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Very creepy for a children's novel, for sure. I then read The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan. and this is the fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series. This series follows the god Apollo as he has, due to the end of the Heroes of Olympus series has been sent to Earth as a teenage human via his god, his god Zeus, his dad Zeus. Uh, well, he is a god, so I guess. 
and basically this series follows Apollo trying to win back his godhood. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I think this was an amazing book, a great ending to this series and I can't wait to see what we're gonna get to do, who we're gonna get to follow in the next series and what kind of fun things are going to happen to our favorite demigods. I then read The Mall by Megan McCafferty and that book follows a young girl who the summer between high school and college she gets a job at the local mall and it follows like the politics of her kind of growing into her own human in this space. I ended up giving that a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. I think that it really is about like the self-discovery and this character learning more about who she is and the type of adult she wants to be through all of the mishaps and things that go on during her three month span at the mall and it also does like some human connection things and your the way that you can reconnect with people that you've been friends with when you were younger and how you can form relationships and how you can form uh, romantic relationships as well as friendships and is I think it's a very good coming of age story. I then read The Haunting of Beatrix Green and that is by three separate authors. The one that I can think of off the top of my head is Rachel Hawkins. There's two others. I don't remember who right now. Uh, that was an arc. The Mall was an arc also, but I read it like six months after it was published because I thought it came out next July and it came out this July. I'm a moron. The Haunting of Beatrix Green came out during October and or November? I think it was October. I think I read it after it came out too. I'm kind of a horrible person lately, let's be honest. The Haunting of Beatrix Green follows Beatrix Green. Uh, she is a seance paranormal type person during the I would say late 1800s early 1900s um, when seances were kind of all the rage in high society and she is hired by a guy to go to uh, this home and kind of prove or disprove the fact that there are ghosts in this house and she is followed by her best friend and they both kind of go on this adventure together. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I did really enjoy it. I think it was very creepy. My issue is that it was really short. Um, it is done like in the serial style which I'm not 100% sure what that even really means because it's it's I'm so confused. Um, it was like volume one, chapter one, I don't even know. Very confused. I do have a vlog coming later this month for all of the arcs that I read but I haven't finished that quite yet. So just as soon as I'm finished with that, that will be posted this month as well. Um, so you can get kind of like my live reactions to that book specifically as well as them all. And the next book that we're going to talk about which is The Ever After by Amanda Hawking. The Ever After is the third book in the Omti Origins trilogy which is a part of the larger um, Canaan Trill series. There's three books in the Canaan Chronicles, three books in the Trill trilogy, and three books in the Omti Origins trilogy. Obviously three books because they're trilogies. There are those and this is the final book out of the nine. I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I think that it was an amazing conclusion not only to this specific trilogy but the series as a whole. Um, the last book you get to be rejoined by our heroine from the Trill trilogy and our heroine from the Canaan Chronicles and spoiler alert somebody dies and it freaked me the fuck out. Um, I've never seen a main character die like that in a book that was done well, mind you. It was done really well and I uh, cried a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the thing that happened. And uh, the series as a whole follows basically trolls and changelings and is about kind of how their society is dying. They use their changelings as a way to get money for the troll communities. They will, especially their more important babies, they will trade them out with a human child and into a rich family so that when the child comes back to the troll world they will bring all of the money with them and they are very, um, they're infertile, they're dying out, their world is being overrun by humans and just kind of like all nine books kind of encompass them trying to figure out 
um, their history, their past, and where they're going to move going forward. Really enjoyed it. Really love Amanda's writing. It's great. I then finally finished A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. I started reading this in like July, August, September. I don't know when. I've been reading this book for a long ass time. This is the second book in the Ember and an Ashes, Ember in the Ashes series. The fourth and final book actually just came out earlier this month. I am just now on book two. I just read book one like right before I read started this one. So I'm newer to this series. I'm working on it. I'm moving on. This series follows Laia who is a part of a race of people who are essentially slaves to the capital and to a different race of people and it follows her and Elias who is one of the slavers people. He's also kind of like a mercenary and he was raised to be this ruthless killer and they both kind of want more for the future of their country and they kind of have to work together in order to make that happen. And I gave this specific book 3.75 out of 5 stars and I think a lot of that was because I felt like it moved so slowly but I also think part of me feeling like it moved slowly was because it took me forever to read. I set this down during October to read all like the spooky reads and I probably should have just kept reading through this. I probably would have enjoyed it more had I done that but I didn't and so I just have to rate it based off of my reading experience and I didn't love my reading experience because I put it down and that was my decision. It's not the book's fault but I digress. There's also some things that happened in this. There are some plot twists my friends, some serious plot twists that did some things that I was not expecting and uh, I did really enjoy it overall and I do plan to continue the series. I then picked up In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is the book club pick for Beautifully Bookish Bethany's book club for December. I did end up reading that on like the 29th I think so it was very close to the end of the month and I ended up giving that a 3.75 out of 5 stars as well. This book follows May who every year her and her family get together with other families that her parents were friends with in college and they all go to this cabin in the woods in the snow where they have a, an annual Christmas tradition that they do all these things specifically and she has always had a crush on one of the other family's older sons even though she's been closer to the younger son because they are the same age and they've always kind of just grown up and done everything together and so people just have always kind of assumed that they would get together even though she has like this massive lifelong crush on the older brother. And at the end of their week she learns that the family is going to sell the cabin and so it's really their last time there and she wasn't expecting that and she's worried that Christmas will never be the same for her because she spent every Christmas at this cabin and so she kind of makes a wish that she could find what would make her happy or for the universe to show her what would make her happy and we kind of go into this Groundhog Day-esque thing where she has to relive uh, the week over again. I will say if you are advertent to uh, the Groundhog Day thing. I don't feel like it really repeats anything and it really only takes place for like the first quarter to third of the book and then after that it kind of stays in the same timeline throughout. Um, I didn't love it because I don't think the ending it didn't go where I wanted it to go and I don't think it expressed a lot of what it wanted to. I don't think it did what it wanted to do if that makes sense. I don't feel like the authors went as far as they could have gone to make the story more impactful and more important. Uh, if you want to know more on this one I have a pretty big uh, mild spoiler section on my Goodreads review so I will link that in the description box below. Um, the Goodreads reviews for everything is linked down below but specifically this one because I have a pretty good chunk of um, like three or four paragraphs of like mild spoilers. Um, so if you want to know more on that definitely check that out. I just I, I feel like there are some things that didn't work the way they wanted to work and I hate the epilogue FYI. Um, I hate it with the passion of A Thousand Burning Suns. It's it's not my jam. I don't mind a happily ever after. I know going into this that it's an adult romance there's gonna be a happily ever after at the end and I'm totally okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the time frame in which it happens. So take that as you will. And then the final book that we're going to talk about is Meet Cute. Some people are destined to meet which is an anthology of short stories that are all meet cutes. This is mine and Kate Cavanaugh's book pick for the 
AuthorTube chat book club for November and December so we will have a live show discussing this book on December 16th at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time on Kate's channel um, and we will be discussing probably something else as well but also this book specifically there's still plenty of time to read it if you would like to read it and join us. I ended up giving this a 3.25 out of 5 stars and I would have loved for it to have been higher because there were some amazing stories in this collection. I think if you're going to read it definitely go um, to Goodreads and look through people's reviews. Most people have put in uh, and I did as well like eat the title of each of the short stories and then rated each one individually and you can definitely see there's a lot in common. I think Oomph, Click, um, The Way We Love Here, Siege Etiquette, uh, there's some others. There's some that are just like really well done and that everyone seems to have a consensus that they like. My issue with the book was that like the last three short stories were real bad. Like I did not like them at all. Kate liked them marginally better than I did, but I just didn't love them. Um, Kate and I had, a, from what I have seen so far, we have a pretty good um, agreement on the ones that we liked, the ones that we didn't like, other than the last three. I think she liked them, especially the very last one. She liked it more than I did. It wasn't my jam. But uh, they're very short, very like cutesy, meet cutes. They don't always end up together. They don't always end in a happily ever after. Um, sometimes they meet on the page and within the, by the end of that page, the story's over. Um, you know, it's not a full story. It is literally just their meet cute. And I really enjoyed that. And it is a very diverse. You have some bisexual characters, lesbian characters, um, non-white, straight, cisgendered people. Um, so there's a lot of different types of people and a lot of different types of stories in there for you to enjoy. That was a lot of books. I read a lot of books this month. We still need to pull our creator spotlight for the day. We're on day seven, so let's do that. Day seven is Katie Ann. Katie is predominantly a writing channel, so author tube. If you would like to check her out, she does sprinting during... I would say they are more like morning Eastern Standard Time weekdays. So not something that I'm ever really able to go to, but if you're awake and alive at that time and not at work, could be for you. She also does vlogging. So she shares her journey via vlogs and she's always very upbeat, happy in like the comments section, always very active in comments of, um, or the chat section of other people's live streams. Um, I just really love Katie. I want to be her best friend and I think you should go and subscribe to her and be her best friend too. That is all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books, if you enjoyed them, if you didn't like them, if any of you are looking forward to reading any of them in the near future. If you don't want to miss any of the advent videos or moving forward into 2021, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!